Blazing Guns 7 here. I'm gonna do a preaching tonight called Burning the Weeds. Also going live on another device. Um, so tune in, subscribe, like, share with people. Burning the Weeds. We're gonna get into it here in a minute as I uh, start going live on the other device. friends and people I don't know, you know what it is, you know what time it is, regardless, you know, I had the birthday, I left work early today, I had family time today, had a birthday dinner and all that, for all of you folks that were saying happy birthday on Facebook, uh, thank you, thank you for the blessings, you know what, you know what time it is though, God gave me a word, right? And so, uh, can't go without letting that word be heard. For he who has ears, let him hear the word of the Lord, right? So we're here, we're here tonight. We're going to preach a late night word for all you late nighters, night crawlers, uh, people on Facebook that are, that are up tonight. Or if you're in another countries that are far and wide, uh, it might be morning over there already, so, but you know how I say, get your Bibles out if you want to follow along with the scriptures, uh, leather bound, hardback, softback, electronic, phone, tablets, computers, however you want to follow along, get those out so you can follow along in the Word, if you don't feel like following along in the Word, then then get a, a pen and a pad and take down notes and dig into it for yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to guide your footpath, give you understanding. And um, so that you could go in, you know how I say, you know, you got to, you know, you can't always just go by what the preacher says or the person preaches, you know, you have to take that word. You have to dig into it, and you have to say, Lord, come before the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to help you dissect the Word so you can get a supernatural understanding so that you can be fed, so that you can be built up, so you can grow, and so that you can share the Word of God with everybody else around you. And so tonight we're going to get into a word that it's, it's called burning the weeds. And so, and people are going to laugh about that, you know, and I'm not talking about burning that weed like I used to back in the day. Um, but we're going to get into the word tonight and we are going to share burning the weeds and we're going to get deep into some scriptures on a late night tip. You know, people used to be out there kicking it late night, right? Kicking it late night, and uh, so we're gonna kick it with. We're gonna kick it. Let me turn this around. We're gonna kick it with Jesus tonight. We're gonna get in that word. We're gonna get in that word. Get in that word. Get in that word, folks. Talk about burning the weeds. Burning them weeds. For real. We're gonna get in there. I'm gonna get in there. You know, I gotta, I gotta, you know what? I gotta for those, you know, maybe make you laugh, you know, a little bit. You know, make you laugh a little bit. Um, but we're gonna get in there. We're about to pray. So for those of you watching, gonna watch, 
bow your heads. We're going to bow our heads. Um, and we're going to get into a word tonight, all right? We're going to get into that word. Also recording on YouTube, but I'm just going to upload it later. Uh, you know how, you know, the Blazing Guns 7 channel, you know, pulling out the spiritual guns for Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Take you to the streets. All right. So let's bow our heads. Let's get into the word of God. I'll turn down the instrumental here in a little bit as we pray. Let's bow our heads and get before the Lord. Lord God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for who you are. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you, God, for making it uh, available to us, Lord, that we may be coming into your throne room, Lord God, because you tore the veil, Father God, that we could come humbly before you, lay down our hearts, lay down our sinful thoughts, lay down our the things that are attacking us, Lord God, coming before you, oh God. Thank you for being our protector. Thank you for uh, sending your holy angels to surround and encamp around us and, and bring the blessings down, Lord, and then fight battles that we cannot see with the natural eye. Lord, thank you, Father God, for, for, for laying down your life, Father God, to, to uh, <clears throat> save our souls, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father in heaven creator of the universe and everything in it thank you we love you lord i pray for every ear listening every eye watching every heart bowed down to you god that you start to till the ground lord god in their hearts lord god you start to prepare their hearts to hear the word of the lord Lord, that you, you start giving them a supernatural understanding, Father God, that you start breaking it down into bite-sized pieces that they can eat for their spirit, Father God, so they can digest it, Lord God, so they can change and revolutionize their mind, their heart, their soul, Father God. I pray that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You said where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst. Lord, there's two or three gathered in this home. There's two or three gathered through the airwaves. Father God, we come boldly before your throne room. We honor you. We bless you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray these things into existence. And we say amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So tonight, we got a word, and I just felt uh, motivated continually. Um, even though I had a long day, I woke up extra early to go to work early. Uh, I've been working extra so that I could have like a half day today, and, and then I got out early, and then I came home, and I, I ran a few errands, came home, and, and then I had family time with the kids we went swimming um so we celebrated my birthday like that with family and then uh, a friend and she's like a mom to me and um she she offered to make me a birthday dinner and you know it was just nice to after the swimming coming home and then going over there and just relaxing, talking, playing board games, uh, watching TV, all together as a family. It was really nice. I didn't need nothing extravagant to celebrate my birthday and all that. It was nice to just have that family time and that, um, um, peace, you know, I had some peace where it wasn't all like this big old party you know, that's nice sometimes, you know, but I was just like, you know what? I just want something intimate, chill, and relaxing. And it, it all flowed that the way, that way. And then, you know, we get home about a couple hours ago and, and it's late. But I still felt deep down, like, because I was working on this study and I felt like God was like, you got to share that word, share that word, you know? And, and so 
He gave me this title, man, Burning the Weeds. And people would be like, what? This dude's crazy, you know? No, but Burning the Weeds, for real. We're about to get into it. So if you got your Bibles out, get them out. Like, follow along with me. Because we're about to dig into this thing. And it's like a two-fold message. I'm going to go to two different things, you know, on this. Because we're going to show a little bit about, you know, we're going to get into some conversations tonight, right? About a green thumb farmer, a good farmer, right? And a hater farmer. So we're going to talk about those two people and, you know, burning these weeds that's going to get you lit with the knowledge of God's word of what's really going on in what's really going on in the world, right? What's really going on out there. And so, um, you know, people be like, hey, man, this dude talking about burning weed you know no no we're gonna talk about burning some weeds it's a different kind of weed it ain't what people are thinking but you know i believe god gave me that just to have a catchy title right to get people you know maybe to laugh a little bit but also to be interested in what we're about to get into right and then you know, even to go further in my notes and say, we're going to burn some weeds. It's going to get you lit. <laughs> but lit. <laughs> Not like the worldly lit. W lit with the knowledge of God's word to show you what's really going on. To shed light on the darkness, right? I mean, this is some deep stuff, folks. Like, it's good. So let's get into this, right? Uh, let's talk about the wisdom of a good farmer as well as the jealousy of another farmer. And so I'm going to get into this part, this beginning part of it. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 13, 24 through 30. And on this, on this particular part, to give people understanding, you know, I chose the NLT version, New Living Translation, because, and I'm going to get into the New King James further down when I go into the other scriptures. But for this one, I I used it for a certain reason, okay? So, Matthew 13, 24, 24 through 30. Let's read that. I'm going to read that. Let me, let me scroll down on my laptop here. Um, so, starting on 1324, it says this. It says, Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted the good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this. The farmer exclaimed. Should we pull the weeds, they asked. No, he replied. You, you will uproot the wheat if you do. Let bro, both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds and tie them into bundles and burn them and to put the wheat in the barn. 
Now, that's just a little opening, right? That's a little opening to give you understanding about a little bit of what we're going to talk about tonight. See, here, you know, Jesus is giving them an illustration about a good farmer sowing good seeds, but then an enemy came, somebody jealous, somebody that may be another farmer down this road, down the street, they wanted to uh, sabotage his crops because... He was blessed. He knew what to sow, how to sow it. He knew a good word, a good seed to, 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 to plant and how to do it. And he had wisdom. And so the servants came and was like, look, there's weeds in there. It's going to it's gonna crowd out. And he said, no, 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 no. He broke it down for them. The good, the green thumb farmer was like, no, this is what you're going to do. You're going to tie up the weeds into bundles and you're going to burn those weeds. You're going to get rid of it, right? And then you're going to harvest, as he said, when the harvesters come, they're going to bundle them and burn them. And then they're going to harvest the good wheat and they're going to store them for later, right? And that's like if that gives you a mental understanding about what's going on here in this parable, not only in the natural, but in the supernatural, you got Jesus here saying, I'm, look, there's a lot of good and evil people out there. And for those who believe in me and in my word that I sold into them and they grab a hold of that, they're going to be the wheat and we're going to get rid of the weeds. He's going to get rid of the weeds later for those who just follow their fleshly desires or, you know, didn't take heed to the word of the seed that was given to them. So we'll get more into that in a minute. But I want to show you in the re in this representation as well, he, he, see, he shows the enemy. So who represents the enemy? Who represents the jealousy, the envy, the prideful one? The one that, that's Satan right there. You see, Satan's coming to steal the people. So he's going to plant bad seeds so that he can break it down. So he can get people out to suffer for what he did. Right? He's like, now I'm cast out forever. I want others to be cast out forever. Ever. He has a grotesque hatred. And we're going to get into that because we're going about to expound on what how we're going to get into some scriptures about how Satan, how his prideful enviousness led to jealousy and hatred towards God and hatred towards those who belong to God. This is deep stuff, folks. I hope you're ready for this. I hope you're ready for this word. So in that, I, I went ahead of my notes a little bit. Let's talk about Satan's pride and jealousy that led to his fall, to hatred towards God and everyone and everything that belongs to God. Also, some verses that show the contrast to an earthly king and even Satan himself. Let's go into the Old Testament, the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 28, 11 through 19. Now, there's a few scriptures here, a few books we got into, and some of them are pretty long, but you know what? It's well needed, and um, I believe the Lord gave me these scriptures as I was digging in, okay? So let's read this story, right? In Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19. And, and, and as we go in, and I'll dissect it and we'll talk about that. And, and, and we'll give some explanation of the contrast and the natural and then the supernatural about it. Okay. Starting at 11, Ezekiel 28, 11. Moreover, 
the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, turquoise, the emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God and I destroyed you and overcoming the cherub from the midst of the fiery stones your heart was lifted up because of your beauty you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor I cast you to the ground I laid you before the kings that they may gaze at you. You defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you, all who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Wow, that's deep. You see, in the beginning, he starts talking about this king of Tyree. And, and you know, in my studies, saying that it could even, because it went deep in there, you, you start to start to see how it went from talking about that king and then going into talking about Satan and how he fell. He was glorious and beautiful and he was glorious and he fell because of what happened inside him. Okay, so it contrasted into Satan's life. So th this king very well, because the prophet was given a word to speak to the king. This king, like Satan, was being filled with the pride, right? So it was started off with his story. So even him himself could have been possessed by the spirit of Satan and related okay but then the prophet starts speaking like it was satan himself and giving him the word of god about the cherub and the cherub is an angel and the angel was created by god so here it went into his his jealousy Pride and envy, and it showed his jealousy about God because it did go and went on. It started talking, and it said, To the one who created you, is gonna remove you. 
And they started talking about his glory and his splendor. Satan was the most. And they talked about his beauty and his perfection. And you see, it started, it started defining how Satan, this Lucifer, looked at. His beauty and his glory, right? He had a he was the most high angel. Above that angel at that time was Father God on top, Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit. Then you had Lucifer, the, the beautiful angel, the worshiper that brought all creation to bring glory to God. You see, and then it starts talking about the stones that was embedded on him, diamonds and um, jasper and topaz and, and onyx and, and sapphire and, and gold. And the workmanship on him, like tambourines and pipes. He was the ultimate worship leader. But he started to see himself. Like, I want to be like God. I want to be above. So his beauty started rising up and how he seen himself. And he started wanting to glorify himself. He wanted to take the throne of God. And that's when he got cut off. Because he did the unpardonable sin. It wasn't enough that he was the top angel. He wanted to be God now. But the angel cannot be God who created the angel. The angel can't create God. God made him. So we, got, we need you to understand. Like... We're going into another subject right now. Because we're talking about the farmers, the good farmer and the bad farmer and the evil one. But 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 for you to understand that story and then going into the end, we're going to finish that story with another word, right? The, where Jesus breaks down the parable. You got to understand behind the scenes of what Satan is trying to do and how he got cut down, right? So he was this glorious one. He was on top of God's mountains. He did all the, bringing all the creation. He was the greatest. And then it wasn't enough. And so he had that in his heart. He had that pride. He had that jealousy and some enviousness. And he's like, oh, no, I, I know I can be. And no, 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 he made a mistake. Because then it says, it goes on to say after it explains who he was and his wisdom that his heart got lifted up above God. So himself, he wanted to lift himself up, pridefulness, want to be a God. And so he got corrupted. He's the one that, he's the one that committed the first sin folks you got to understand before man before man disobeyed God in the garden he sinned and brought the distortion between God and the one third of the angels that follow Satan and created the war between the two you got to understand these principles so then it goes on to say and it explains in, the, in that word, right? That, that it brought that and then he was cast down to the ground. So he was cast down to earth, folks. With one third of the angels that followed him. So now Satan and the demons, right? Evil. Cast out forever. Because then he goes on to say that. He declares it. He said, because of all these things, and it turns you, and it changed you. And he's like, I cast you down to the ground. And, and, and in the sight, <clears throat> everybody's going to see you in the end. This one? <clears throat> this is the one that caused havoc? 
This is the one that shook the earth. This is the one that was causing people to go to hell, causing people to stumble, causing people to think that there was something greater. Wow. And people are going to be astonished, it says. And then you became a horror and you shall be no more forevermore. That means he made his unpardonable sin. He cannot have redemption. He cannot go back to the heavens. The only thing he goes to the heavens for is to talk to God. Can I do this and can I do that? Because he needs permission, folks. But he will never be with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit ever again when his time is checked out. Because his weed is going to be burnt for eternity. Amen? Let's go into some more scripture about him. About his identity, about his pride, about his envy and his jealousy of God and everything that belongs to God. Isaiah chapter 14, we're going to read 12 through 17. Isaiah 14, 12 through 17. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. It says this. How are. How you are fallen from heaven. O Lucifer. Son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weakened <coughs> the nations. <coughs> Excuse me. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be made like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms, who made the world as wilderness? And destroyed its cities who did not open the house of his prisoners. So that even contrasts with the last scriptures that we read, right? It goes in. Now it's giving him his name. It's saying it's calling Lucifer out, fallen one. Okay. And it shows there again, like. He started being prideful. You seen that pride? He was like, I'm going to be above God's stars. I'm going to be above. He's the one that sits on the congregation of God, he says. And he's going on and on about himself. And again, you see in the word. How he says. I will be like the most high. So he's trying to take that place, folks. He's trying, and he can't. He can't. He is not an equal to God. I need people to understand that. People say God, devil, opposites. No, it's not like that, folks. It's not like that. He is not the opposite. He is not God. He is not a God. They call him the God of this world because of the corruption and everything that's corrupted and everything that gives corruption praise and everybody does it willingly 
you know, some people don't know that truth, right? They got to have a supernatural encounter and come into the light of Christ to understand the truth and become a believer. But either that or there's then there's ones that are just doing it. They don't care that he is who he is and they're deceived or they are willingly just living it. Okay. But. He is a fallen angel, folks. He is not a fallen God. He created little false gods in people's minds and hearts. In man. Started building stones or worshiping people and doing this and doing that, right? False gods, folks. They're not real. And so the demons play with that. Because they manifest to show people to the eye, to their their face, that this stuff is real, but but they're false, okay? And so, you know, you got to get into the Word to understand these secrets of God. You got to say, God, reveal this to me. I need to know. I want to. I want the truth. And Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. He will set you free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. And he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through to the Father said through me. So there's a verse for that. There's an app for that. There's a verse for that. And, and, and God backs himself up all through the word. But here you got Satan talking about himself, lifting himself up. But in the end, folks... He's a liar. Everything he promises to you, it's a lie. He'll leave you high and dry. And if those who know what I'm talking about, you'll understand what I'm talking about. He'll leave you high and dry. He'll promise you things. If you ever messed up, if you ever went back, if you ever fell down, listen, he always lies. He'll make it look so good like a piece of candy. You unwrap that candy, you eat it, it tastes so sweet and good. But in the end, you got a stomach ache, a rotten tooth. Because he left you high and dry. He, he had you thinking, oh, maybe you could convert her. Oh, maybe you could convert him. And you fall into sin to fill the lust of the flesh. And it binds you. He sends seven more demons to crowd you. Because he knows. The enemy knows he, that God got a plan for your life. He has a word for you to share with somebody about the light of Christ. So listen. So we're talking about how the deceiver came to deceive. Though we started talking about burning the weeds, right? And, and how God's going to clean up the weeds and... And burn them and then save the good wheat for himself, right? In the kingdom, right? But here you're starting to see definition of who Lucifer was, who he is today, and what he's doing because he's running out of time to destroy lives and steal souls because, you know... He can't ever go back. So 